I'm with Walter Hoyn, the director of Joint Adventures. So uh, for me, let's start with uh, Transversat Europa mm -hmm. in 2012. Uh, so I had the feeling of some links between the performances that I'm uh, looking at in these days and uh, in a different way between the workshop proposed. So I would like to know the, the main themes or links that are between the shows and the workshop mm -hmm. proposed in this edition of the festival. Mm -hmm. So basically the, the workshop program fol follows the idea uh, what a dancer or a choreographer nowadays needs in order to prepare for his or her artistic work on stage. And that might be more an artistic workshop where you explore things like with Xavier Leroy or with uh, Simon Ottoloni or technical preparation like you have in a lot of technical workshops or a kind of body awareness or uh, to inform yourself about uh, risks that you have if you're taking dance classes, if you're rehearsing, if you're moving, uh, about, uh, I don't know, prophylaxis and uh, rehabilitation, if you mm -hmm. have dance injuries or medical questions, all those kinds of ideas. And uh, Tanzwerkstatt always tries to combine the workshop level and uh, performative uh, series. And uh, <coughs> we try, of course, to uh, listen to s s several de developments in contemporary dance so we don't have an ideology that dance has to look like this or like that. Okay. So the program is centered around dance and performance work mm -hmm. and, uh, and the main idea is to connect uh, your own experience in the workshop with the artistic experience uh, on stage. Okay. and reflect on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we started with a symposium within that context yeah. on choreography and uh, this year we did a symposium about history and uh, the histories in, in dance, the question how something like narration, like uh, content, like meaning, yeah. like uh, uh, I don't know, uh, common sense has been uh, developed in a dance performance and what kind of uh, artistic concepts there in, uh, exist, how you can think that process between the performative and the spectator and uh, so we concentrated on that because also there are many artists like Olga de Soto for example yeah. but also others, uh, Martin Nachbar, yeah. uh, Xavier who were interested in their artistic research uh, about um, other artists who have been working in a, in a different historical period yeah. and so um, we thought it might be nice to reflect a bit on that in, in that weekend so for this year we have invited three artistic lectures in a yeah. way with Martin Nachbar, Olga de Soto with the introduction and uh, Xavier Leroy with uh, Product of Other Circumstances and combine that with some theoretical lectures. Yeah. 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 That was but the main idea for, the, for, for this year. Yeah, and but it was just interesting for me because um, it, uh, I was uh, also, I don't know, but I was reading this book uh, in these days, which is quite casual, but um, that reflects also on the act of uh, acting or, or doing some actions and then to to have a time and a space to don't go with the flow, but uh, reflect on yeah on also and, and criticize maybe also what what is this yeah. act of yeah we're watching at the past mm -hmm. and how a contemporary body can can rewrite in a way so yes yeah. i mean okay. that the whole question about looking at the past is anyway difficult because as we all know there's only a presence existing yeah. and if we are thinking about the past then we remember and if we are thinking about the future we project yeah but we all do this in presence. So the question is, of course, how can you do a reconstruction of a historical work? Because we cannot enter the same river twice, so yeah. it's a different surrounding, we live in a different culture, we have different informations, the audience is different, the setting is different, and for example, when the Green Table has been created in 1932, there were completely different times and we cannot even imagine how yeah. it was living in 
those times. So we get a lot of information about it, of course, through news, to, through uh, history books whatsoever, uh, through our parents, but <coughs> after all, we have no idea how it was yeah. to live in those times. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, I very much like a work like Olga de Soto's, who's uh, just looking for the traces yeah, of a word of the, that yeah, the memory, in, the, yeah. in the memory of the individuals, but the spectators, or yeah. in that case, the dancers who have been dancing the green yeah. And, yeah, just to speak about the past, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me just a little bit uh, how did the idea of Tancred Sat started in 2001? Oh. The idea started very simple. At that time, Munich was a rather boring city, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, for the dancers especially, because they were not connected at all. Okay. Uh, I've started one big festival in 1990, which was the beginning of Joint Adventures. Yeah. Uh, I organized a festival in 15 cities with 19 co-presenters uh, with 120 shows of a, a period of five months, okay. which was called BR Dance. At that time, mm -hmm. Germany was called mm -hmm. BRD, uh, Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Uh -huh. and, um, oh. and we just had the fall of the Berlin Wall. So we showed a, a contemporary dance from Germany all over Germany. Mm -hmm. And I stimulated all the German presenters to meet for the first time in Musantum in Frankfurt, and there were like 40 colleagues meeting. So okay. we said, like, let's do something together to present our own scene. And this, the result was the festival. So this was my first project. Okay. And uh, I, at that time, I didn't know that this was already a historical project because it, it never happened again since then to okay. have so many partners in a project and uh, do the first presentation of contemporary dance that was really nationwide after the Second World War. Okay. And then, uh, after that, I thought about the idea. I had established a small budget with the city of Munich, like 60,000 German marks that I had from Munich. And uh, they said, okay, this money is there now. Do you have an idea for something new? So I proposed to do a workshop and maybe do some performances. So we had like three, three shows at night. and like eight workshops during daytime. So this okay. was the beginning of Tanzwerkstatt. I organized it alone. At the beginning it was a complete nightmare. And yeah. I made a big surplus because I sold so many workshop tickets uh, that I really made a, made a winning with it. And I had to give that back to the city. So yeah. the year after I thought 92, I make it much bigger. I did yeah. like 14 shows in 11 days and I made a big deficit. And the deficit I couldn't get give back to the city, so I kept it myself. So I learned from this in the very beginning, and uh, and and I started my first international networking project together with the Place Theater, with yeah. the Theater Contemporain de la Danse in uh -huh. Paris and the Musée in Frankfurt, to co-produce four young choreographers on a common theme. Okay. And the four young choreographers were, were William Petit from France, Louis Horta from Portugal. Uh, Micha Puruka from Munich and uh, Mark Murphy from Britain. Okay. And these four were co-produced in their hometowns, came together in Munich for the final rehearsals of their productions. Okay. They visited each other in the rehearsal period to see how the other ones are working, premiered together and then toured to the cities of the other co-producers. And the funniest thing was that this was a model that has then been often re-established in Europe in order yeah, to yeah, co-produce yeah. artists, but this was one of the first attempts to do that. And it also had a little bit of an influence on the funding policy of the uh, European Commission at that time. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe we can just tell how, how is it now for you, this, yeah, this work uh, as a programmer, and how do you approach this work day by day now? And, yeah. That's a very open question. Um, <laughs> how do I approach it day by day? I try to survive yeah. the, the but because, ab yeah. ab abundant information that we get nowadays. You yeah. know, when I started, uh, there were a few festivals which were like meeting places yeah. where where everybody went. I mean, there was a festival in Mulhouse called Eurodance. Everybody met in spring dance in. Uh, Utrecht, uh, then there was Klopstuk in Leuven, so there were some 
uh, focus is uh, Danza Valencia was uh, very interesting yeah. because you could see the whole Spanish scene. So there were a few meeting places, Festival mm -hmm. International de Nouvelle Dance in Montreal. And uh, at that time it was rather easy to get uh, uh, good information yeah. on, on the few interesting things. Yeah. Uh, on mm -hmm. the other hand, now you get an email from everybody who does a public rehearsal and it's so hard to find your way through and uh, so that's one of the crucial questions right now. Yeah. How do you survive in the overflow of information? Informations, yeah. And yeah. was easier for artists at, in, the, in the 80s because you could slowly develop. Now since everybody knows that you're there as an artist from your first step on, uh, you cannot surprise anybody anymore, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, in the 80s you had like four or five years to mature in your work before any international producer has seen you. Yeah. Now if you make your first good little thing, they pull Every, you on the big yeah. stages immediately. And then it's hard to, to survive. So I think that system changed completely. Uh, and on the other hand, of course, uh, we had much easier times in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, when we uh, were having awful lots of audiences. And uh, this also had to do with the kind of dance that had been made at that time. So yeah. Now, since dance became more conceptual, uh, and it, not, it doesn't only have to, uh, to do with the fact that it's conceptual, but also uh, the lack of physicality, there is also an there's some very simple interests that an audience has, like emotions or virtuosity. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. I don't know, looking for nice patterns in a choreography, things like that. I mean, this doesn't exist anymore in dance. I don't miss it yeah. because I'm interested in other things. But I see the reasons why there are less people interested in this kind of work. So okay, yeah. And, because, yeah. and then, mm -hmm. then of mm -hmm. course, it's uh, a question: How does this art form survive in the future? Because it's yeah. a luxury to work like that right yeah. now, yeah. because all the structures have been built in the 80s and the 90s yeah. for another kind of dance. Yeah, yeah. And now we have to see how we can manage yeah, to construct. connect both. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, my feeling is that there are there are like. Um, uh, publics are more spe specialized in a way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. I, the, I, really, the public exactly. for this thing yes. and not for yeah. And that's what I try with Tanzwerkstatt yeah. to to bring to yeah. uh, seduce an audience yeah. that normally wouldn't go to see Xavier Leroy or Olga de Soto or Martin Nachba. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to come and see it be confronted with it, yeah. but maybe not leave it. And uh, the very easy for me to do a program where all my colleagues would say like, okay, hey, you are really a tough programmer, you know. Yeah, you yeah. know the right things and you can put it to each other. But yesterday somebody told me in a nice sentence, uh, this was quite funny. He said like they had like a, a project somewhere in uh, Slovenia. Yeah. And he said like, wow, this was a great project. We developed nice, t really interesting tools, but we lost all our pro our audience. You know? mm -hmm. and that's and that's. I think the crucial point is to create that link between an artistic research with to also. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not saying educate, but uh, to to build an audience that it's open for yeah. seeing things. Yeah. And it's and, very yeah. important also for yeah. for making more interesting art. Yeah, but I think that maybe I don't know because I was watching also the the different editions of the festival mm -hmm. is also because of the regularity in a way. Mm -hmm. So this kind of relationship mm -hmm. with the artists, so the the spectators year Make by year exactly. start to be yeah. That's uh, one of our yeah. concepts to yeah. not always look for the fresh and new. Yeah. new but also build a relationship with some artists and uh, Jerome Bell has been yeah. here more often. Jonathan Burroughs, we showed almost all mm -hmm. the works. Thomas Howard has been here for many years. So there were other artists who went there more in the 90s. I think Angels Margarita and Mudances we had very often uh, in that time. But uh, there are a few 
which we follow, yeah. and uh, who are also constantly surprising us. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we just don't follow artists for its own sake, but uh, if an artist keeps making surprising work, and Jonathan Burroughs, I think, has reinvented uh, choreography with every new piece he did, so yeah. it's my big hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, you are uh, the director of uh, Joint Adventures, oh. so I would like to ask you uh, what are the different activities that you are carrying on on different. Yeah. So Joint Adventures is doing right now four different types of projects. Okay. <coughs> One is Tanzwerkstatt Europa, which is our main project. Yeah. Then we have another project called Access to Dance, mm -hmm. which we do together with the Mokatale which is like a season of contemporary dance with a little focus on a certain topic or a certain country or whatever. We always decide from year to year what it should be. Uh, so in order to keep and develop an audience here. And then uh, we do a, a competition on uh, choreographic films called Choreographic yeah. Captures, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually my favorite project right now because uh, we develop completely new ground right now. Yeah. We, in, we in, At that time, I really could say five, six years ago, we invented a new format, doing one minute choreographic yeah. films. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, we get uh, films from, I don't know, 40 countries or even mm -hmm. more, and uh, sent the prize winners to 60 cinemas in Germany, where we get like an audience between 500 and 750,000 people to see those films mm -hmm. in the advertising slots before the film starts. Okay. So it's an art in public space project where we, our slogan is art for those who didn't ask for it. Yeah. So uh, if you do the, your little shopping scene in the cinema, suddenly there is an artistic film so surprising you and taking all your attention. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have more attention in that situation in cinema than if you would do it in a museum or in an arts hall. Of course. Hall. Yeah. And uh, that's that's very nice, and I, I feel like there's a whole new genre being created around this. So I'm quite happy that uh, after five years we can already see that that there's a different way of filming existing. Yeah. Now. So. And, and the yeah, last and the one is yeah. the National Performance Network, yeah. which is a funding scheme for touring within Germany. We used to have a co-production fund uh, with the German Cultural Foundation which we are hoping to re-establish for next year. Okay, okay. So, it's for dance, for theater, and for co-productions with dance. Yeah. And so, um, just maybe one last question. Um, what, what kind of work you do, let's say more, yeah, let's say politically, in, in this way to, to, to have a structural support for mm. contemporary dance and theater in Germany. So how do you work in this? Yeah, that's mainly be because I, uh, we write this on our homepage because we have been building up a few yeah. structures together. Yeah. For example, the German dance platform, Dance voilà. Platform Deutschland. Yeah. That's a project that I started in 1994 mm -hmm. together with Nele Hertling, who used to be the director of Hebel Theater at that time and Dieter Buro, who was the director of Mosonturm since many years, who he just retired in, in December. So the okay. three of us, we co-founded the German Dance Platform. Mm -hmm. And this went on as a biennial platform. Uh, it grew a lot because other presenters joined in, and the Tanz Platform in Deutschland is uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest plat platform in Europe to present the contemporary dance yeah. productions from one country two international promoters. So there okay. are around 500 so-called uh, professionals coming to see the, okay. some of the okay. most interesting productions from Germany okay. every two years. Yeah. And and the National Performance Network is of course a funding scheme that we've developed and, and uh, we have uh, uh, been pushing for the Ger Bavarian Association for Contemporary Dance, yeah. which is the regional, uh, taking the regional grants from the Ministry of Culture of Bavaria and distributing those means to dance projects. And uh, I co-founded the, the so-called Steady Conference on Dance, mm -hmm. which is, uh, which is, uh, was like a round table for all dance institutions on, on a national level. And out of this grew the 
Deutscher Dachverband Tanz, which is, uh, is the, I say, the organization that has all national and regional art uh, dance organizations under its roof. Okay. So, and to address politically what's needed for dance. Yeah, okay. So you work, um, I, yeah, I said just what I understand. Uh, so you work, m yeah, to very much on in Munich, and then uh, you, yeah, you yeah, kind of establish what, how do you, yeah. Well, the net, title of the work. company uh, that, that I run, Joint Adventures, yeah. already says that we are trying to collaborate with people. We're trying to create joint adventures, but not as a travel agency, but maybe as okay. a travel in your own fantasy. Yeah. On the other hand, we tried, uh, there's this idea of joint ventures, which was very often used in, in the late 80s, early 90s, because uh -huh. of the opening of the uh, Eastern Europe, and they were talking about joint ventures between uh, East and West companies uh -huh. and so on. So I like, what I'm doing is a joint adventure. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> And the idea is to use the quality of our artistic project in order to promote uh, uh, the field of dance and performance and to create something like we call structural promotion. So it's not about promoting in a sense of running around with leaflets, yeah. but creating substantial structures that help artists to make work. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And uh, the biggest need we right now still have uh, is production funds on a national level okay. for artist-led projects. So that you don't only get money as an artist if you follow a certain scheme that directs you where to go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is my biggest wish right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. mm, I think that we don't have any more time now? <laughs> I don't know how late. It's, uh, yeah, I think we should yeah, go. Yeah, so okay, thank you. Hmm? Thank you.